Okay. There we go. We're okay, live. Uh, hello, man. Hello. Uh, this is uh, today's uh, this is today's podcast, usual Sunday podcast, and today we're talking about things men do. You know, just uh, just regular things. We often get the line and uh, hello, man. Oh, there it goes. What happened? I just uh, forgot. I always do the same thing. I forget to turn off the uh, <laughs> the sound on the other side. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh -huh. So, uh, so we're talking about. Uh, we often hear the line, uh, you know, what do you do if you get lonely, and uh, that gets thrown at us like we're lonely or something. And really, we're not lonely. We find things to do uh, in our lives. We're, it, we we lead pretty exciting lives, actually. Uh, and that's just coming from a person that can't figure out what to do in life if they don't have a woman around, uh, <laughs> a play toy. A, uh, a thing, the, the, the entertainment, or the woman is the entertainment, and they can't figure out how to entertain themselves. How do MGTOWs entertain themselves? Well, we do it in a lot of different ways, uh, and that's what we're going to talk about today, the different ways and how we react to things and how we feel about things, and then we'll probably move along with a variety of different subjects. Hello, Misanthrope. Hello, uh, Warhorse. How are you guys today? Hey, Joe. Hey, good morning. Yeah, what do you... <laughs> What do you think about that line that you get thrown at us all? We we often get it thrown. Aren't you guys lonely? <laughs> well, uh, you know, and and we keep replying. Most of us, anyway, that know the difference is uh, between being alone and being lonely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, being alone within your head, and uh, uh, being contemplative and uh, content are not loneliness. Uh, so, um, you know, and and keeping busy. Uh, my God, there's so many things in life to do, uh, different kinds of li things that, uh, you know, I, I rarely ever feel uh, lonely. And, and when I do, uh, the old Tom Likas routine comes in, in play where uh, I leave the house and I go somewhere where there are people or I invite some people over. You yeah, know, it's yeah. that simple. And, yeah, I never uh, have a shortage of friends. Uh, you know, I am rather <laughs> entertainment. I, I am an entertaining person. You know, I never have a shortage of friends coming over. And uh, I think some people mistake just being alone and just having that relaxed time. Because if you do MGTOW, you know, there's one thing for sure and two for certain. You're going to have some uh, relaxed time in life. And uh, what you do with that relaxed time that's the important part how you uh, if you make that into a manageable situation where hey th there's nothing wrong with just sitting on a couch and vegetating for a day men need to recover from whatever they're doing a lot uh, that's okay but you know I have a garage I have things I do I, I, I you know I work out a little I do this I do a lot of things geez uh, I, I'm never alone with myself because this brain God it can go long it can go into you know it, <laughs> I could take it to far places, you know. Uh, uh, and there is a difference between being alone and being lonely. And uh, being, uh, what I think what we get from these guys uh, that come around and say that is they can't figure out what to do without a woman in their life. Well, they can't figure out what to do with themselves. Yeah. And they need that that input. They need to be told what they to do to all the told. time. Yeah, and uh, of course that usually entails the the female, the partner. You know, so um, they they can't make up their own mind, and they're lost. So they project that onto us, which I feel it very rejuvenating just to sit here in a quiet house, looking out the window, or looking around the room and enjoying all the things that I've I've accomplished, the things I've gotten, the things I've done. Um, uh, to me, that's very regenerative. Oh, yeah. Yeah, James uh, Denton says, go on a bike trek. I'm getting a new bike pretty soon. Uh, no pedal bike. I don't uh, really uh, uh, I really don't really do the motorcycle things. But, uh, uh, I'll leave uh, that to me. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave that to you. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I like to take the bike back in the woods, too. Um, I'm a rather big guy, so it's, a, it's not the safest thing to do. It's not like I'm 170 pounds of... Uh, of pure muscle, and uh, I could I could just scoot through the woods effortlessly. But man, there is probably nothing funner than taking a mountain bike down a woods in Ohio. <laughs> uh, we got quite a few trails and stuff like that, and it's it's healthy. It's really healthy, but uh, I, I do have to watch myself with those kind of risks. 
<laughs> yeah, it's uh, uh, to me. Well, of course, the motorcycle to me is you know, you know where I tend to get the cobwebs out of my head and feel that euphoric uh, freedom that. And, and look, I've been riding for like 48 years, so, you know, it's not yeah. something that I just found recently, but it's a passion and a love that I've really had that's lasted this long, so it must be worth something. Um, you know, going going on the long trips used to be what I really enjoyed, you know, camping uh, with a pup tent, uh, the mess kit, you know, starting a fire. I mean, uh, God, I love that, you know, being out under the open mm -hmm. sky. Yeah, and, camping. Uh, uh, of course, sometimes the hardships would kind of be uh, uh, a portion of it that really kind of sucked, but the stories you got to tell afterwards about it made it all worthwhile, the adventure that you went on, whatever that may be. But, um, you know, nowadays the long trips are over with for me, so I, I make it short. And I, like you, Joe, I get involved in so many different things, so many different little projects, um, and so many things that keep my mind occupied almost to the point of overdoing it, you know, uh, and I do this to myself. Nobody does this to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you should see my kitchen. I have this little kitchen stand that I took out the table and I put this little stand in. Uh, it's like a little bar countertop, and at any time of the day, there's like a pile of tools, some electrical gear, and you, you, when you walk into my house, there's no, it's no woman shit around here. There's a pile of tools, some electrical stuff, my project, which is usually some weird thing happening in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and uh, everybody comes over, they go, what are you doing now, Joe? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, that's uh, almost like your friends are, uh, you know, I, I used to have the same thing. I, I used to have a, a Harley engine on my, my kitchen table. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, people used to come in and, uh, what the hell is that? You know, of course, yeah. most of the guys I knew knew what it was, but, uh, you know, some of the women and stuff like that, they come in, what the hell is on your kitchen table? And uh, uh, I'd say it's an engine. You know, yeah, why is it in the kitchen? And why wouldn't it be? It's the cleanest it spot, you know, yeah. to have an engine that, that I cherish more than uh, what you might put on it, like dishes. You know, I don't care about them. Yeah, that's so, an interesting uh, decoration. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a centerpiece, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're not, you know, we get this perception of people that we're just these mundane people that chat on the internet all day and blah 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 we have no life and uh, we have no friends and we're lonely and, and that's coming from what they're doing is projecting aren't they yeah uh -huh. we get a lot of that projection in MGTOW that you know first you hear you're, you must be gay because you, you, you've eliminated some, certain things from your life and then <laughs> And then you get the projection. Oh God, you got to be so lonely. You're so pathetic. And then, <laughs> and then they go from that, and they take it a long way and uh, do the the spin up in their head what we must be. And it could yeah, be. Well, I like it. I like the virgin part of it. First they, they oh, call yeah. us gay, and then they call us a virgin. Well, make up your mind, you know. Yeah. Um, number one, and if you call me a virgin, come on, man, I'm 58 years old. You know, well, let's give it let's give it the benefit of the doubt and say I got it laid at least once. You know, yeah. I mean, come on, uh, who the fuck are you? You know, you can't shame me with that type of talk. And you know, the the loneliness, like you said, it's projection. Uh, maybe these people have a wife that feels the need. And women are more social. I'll grant you that. You know, the, most of them are more social. Uh, they like that interaction, constantly having people around them, having shit going on. Oh yeah. Uh, whether it makes any sense or not, that's why they love soap operas and what have you. But um, you know, uh, so this man is t is tagging along. He's being told what to do, when to do by this woman. Plus, she's bringing all these people around for whatever dinner parties or party at the house or let's go here and there and let you know. They're always surrounded by people, which can be stifling. To the to the male spirit and the male, uh, you know, just uh, being able to uh, think within your own mind and create something. You know, you're not creating yeah, anything. You're not creating you're just, anything. You're just padding her or, or that social life, and that to me seems to be a very lonely life compared to what they're calling us lonely as. Uh, yeah, and it's they're costly. surrounded by people. They're surrounded by people that are not real people. They're not true friends. They're not, you know, they're all users, losers, and players, and gamers, and whatever. And I don't mean gamers in the console yeah. type. Uh, but uh, 
those people don't realize that they're surrounded by a lot of people, but they are indeed very lonely. Yeah, yeah. It, there's a certain cost to living that kind of lifestyle too. Uh, I, I notice with a few uh, women and a few uh, you know couples that I that I uh, that I know in my life, and and it, it, yes, people. Just because I'm a MGTOW, I know couples and I know married couples and all that garbage. You know, I, I do know I have people, and they spend so much time worrying about other people and their in, in doing these little events on the weekend. And I asked my buddy one day, I says, "How much does that cost you? What's your food budget?" You know, he's, he's <laughs> big spreads, and he says it's four hundred and thirty dollars a month, uh, four hundred and thirty dollars a week. And I was like, "Oh my God, you're you're spending like two hundred dollars a week to entertain your friends." Damn, oh, <laughs> two two fifty, you know, just to have company. Because why? Why can't you can't you just like turn on the TV with your wife and have a good day? And he, he I, I would spend like, two hundred dollars to keep people away sometimes. Damn. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. And uh, the thing is, uh, he was doing. He, he looked at me after I said that, and uh, he says, "Well, if." If it's the choice of spending two hundred bucks and being around some guys, or being with my wife for the whole weekend, what would you choose? And I thought, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so there's reasons they do that, and that's the reciprocal pattern of marriage. You know, you're always doing something kind of unnatural yeah. to, to make things seem uh, like it's natural, and these people get this reciprocal lifestyle where it's eating away at what they should have been or should have been doing. And if you listen to a lot of the guys, uh, they will uh, fess up eventually and say, you know what, I'm tired of this shit. My wife, she was a social butterfly. I mean, everything mm -hmm. was a party. You know, every birthday had to be yeah. a party. We had people over. Every New Year's Eve, we had to have it at our house. The place turned into a stinking mess hole after everybody leaves their beer bottles all over, their mess everywhere, nobody helps clean up. And I'm telling her, I says, look, this isn't worth it to me, you know. I hate this shit. I hate these people over here using us like we're we're their uh, butlers or or whatever. You know, they come to our house, use our pool, use our our bar. They drink our shit and everything, and then they leave this mess. Oh yeah. And uh, you know, uh, I, I said I'm tired of this, but she had to have it. You know, one time a friend of mine got hurt at work, and we had a big benefit party for him. We had over 400 people at our place. Oh I yeah, mean, I know those days. <laughs> oh God, you know. And the mess. I had to rent porta potties. I had to. We had a live <laughs> band there. You know, we, well, the cops came, of course, and all this stuff. I, I, and after a while, I told her, and I, I knew that she was actually towards uh, the end here, uh, very frustrated because I started to turn into a hermit. I just wanted to get away from people. I, it's like, you know, why don't you ask people to come over? And I says no, because if I go out, I can see them somewhere else, and I can leave when I've had enough. You know, if they're here, you try to be a good host, and you don't want to be rude. You don't want to kick people out and say, "Hey, look, I've had enough of your shit. Now get out." <laughs> you know, it's yeah. just not it's not right. So instead of being forced to do that and saying, "Look, it's late. I want to go to bed. Can you people go home?" Uh, you just you go out, and then when you're done and you had your fill of socializing, you leave. You know, to me, that's the perfect way. To go about doing things, so therefore I'm never lonely because I uh, I'm here because I want to be. You know, I don't have to be. Right, we I cherish. Could, right, we cherish solitude. Sure. Right now, I could be on the bike. I could be going over to one of my watering holes right now, and I know there's about shit, six people there <laughs> sitting yeah. already that I know very well for a long time, and I could have a good time talking to them if if I so choose to do so. Uh, there's no loneliness here. I, 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 you know, I don't get it. Yeah, me too. It's it's a it's a projection of uh, of one's own. I, I get it at least once a week on my uh, on my uh, comments that, uh, geez, you know, you, you must be so lonely and pathetic, Joe. No, <laughs> pathetic. Yeah. Well, where does that? How does that even tie into loneliness? Yeah, how does you know? that even That's... tie into that? And I, you know, sometimes I, I feel that I get family members around too that just say those things like, "Oh, Joe's you know, so sad. He doesn't have a woman." <laughs> it is shaming talk all the way around. You know, yeah, it's, it's shaming I, I talk. Mean, lonely, lonely, and pathetic 
don't necessarily go together. And it almost makes you think of this little puppy, this innocent big-eyed puppy, and you tied him down to a, 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 a two-foot chain to the ground in the middle of a sand pit and just left him there all day. That's lonely and pathetic, yeah, all right? Yeah. Uh, uh, being, even if you get lonely, it doesn't follow that you're pathetic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really. Yeah, it, it comes from the strangest people, too, and... Uh, it, you can look back at my life, and if it, if, it, if it, all these people know me, and they got to ask the question: If Joe ever showed up at a party drunk, would that not be exciting? <laughs> 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 it would, you know, because I have this certain personality, and I'm over the top a lot, and right. uh, <laughs> I, I still am over the top. I just do it here by myself, and I do certain, you know, call it, um, you know call it a little bit crazy or whatever you know Tesla was a little bit crazy and uh, oh, no. a lot of guys are a little Einstein was a little bit crazy you know uh, you know if I don't brush my hair every second of the day or I don't do these things that uh, it, it, it looks funny sometimes and I, I walk around with my uh, you know if I'm walking around with my pajamas on with a couple wrenches in my hand and a, and a saw <laughs> You know, uh, it, yeah, that from the outside world may look, uh, but it's very natural for me, you know. Uh, right. Uh -huh. uh, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm always doing And uh, reading books, I, I read at least an hour to two hours a day. Audio books, too, are, fuck, are just great to leave running while I'm doing something. Yeah. And uh, I, I get a lot from that stuff, and I get a lot from, uh, I get a lot from life. So there's no shortage of... Uh, of entertainment with me uh, because you know what it is it's about learning how to entertain yourself and that was a hard thing to get over well I see here at uh, 20 21 12 sparks says loneliness is a state of mind and he's he's right on the money with it and not not only is it a state of mind but it's a choice there are mm -hmm. times when I choose to be an introvert and there are other times I can be quite an extrovert yeah. and uh, it is a choice which one I want to be. So uh, that is what I think a lot of people miss. That uh, you know, if I, uh, I'm kind of okay, I'm not around for a week and I don't talk to anybody. I'm hanging out at the house. I'm doing my own thing. Now all of a sudden I'm an introvert. I'm uh, you know hiding out, uh, you know, away from society. I don't want anything to do with it. Yeah, for that week maybe I needed that, and I'm going to do that for that week and then when I go out for the weekend I'll blow the, the you know uh, kick my heels up if you will and be uh, a, a chatty Nancy you know I hate to say the term Nancy but Chancy Nancy yeah. <laughs> which I, I do get to be you know if I have if I'm having a good time I get to be a, an extrovert so it's a choice it's a state of mind and it is a choice of how you prefer to be at any given time as long as you aren't trapped in one you know yeah. if uh, I think once you become trapped into being either one that that's this is a real and present danger at that point because now you feel you can't get out of it you should be able to control that yeah yeah you know what I found when when I was in my blue pill days and uh, married or dating or whatever I was doing at that time I rarely talked at all I, I rarely had anything to say because I, I, I was always kind of watching myself. Uh, I didn't want to say anything offensive. I didn't want to do anything offensive. I was just trying to be that perfect guy, uh, that, that perfect uh, statue sort of that was just there, uh, you know, so she can go, hey, look, 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 here's my boyfriend or here's my husband and look how well-dressed he is and well-mannered he is. Uh, and uh, that, that became so hard. That was a really difficult obstacle for me to uh, to jump over and I remember uh, sitting down with a counselor at one time and he says Joe you just gotta open up and, and start talking and uh, I think I went about after my event I went about two years where I probably said about three words Wow! <laughs> and, uh, uh, and I did I opened up I started talking to people I started I consciously making an effort to be more sociable and I said, "Wow, this is pretty great." And and uh, you know what? There's a whole different side to Joe. There's yeah. this whole there's, there's this whole different thing that I didn't know. Well, I knew he was there, and I had tucked him down so deep that I couldn't see him anymore. 
Yeah, it's and, called building a wall around you. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, if time, and I've been accused of that by, by many people that, uh, mostly women, you know, uh, that I've built a wall so high that nobody can get in. Well, there's a good reason for that. Yeah, you know? that was a good reason. Uh, <laughs> a real for... good reason. <laughs> I When I was younger, I used to, you know, kind of, I hated any interaction whatsoever with just about anybody. And it was mostly, it was, it was interesting because I was like, I would look around the world and be like, hey. I don't like what people talk about. I don't like chit chat. I don't like weather talk. It's yeah. just all drivel to me. And then I realized one day, well, shit, I can bring up the shit I wanted to talk about, and people will respond. And I'm like, it was a revelation, you know? Yeah, well, yeah it was a revelation when you feel you can be the 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 conversation starter. You can have interesting topics to talk about. You can uh, you can do that at parties, and you can do that with friends, and they appreciate it because a lot of guys. Uh, they're still in that blue pill world where they're not allowed to have an opinion. Oh, well, steering the conversation takes a certain art, and yes. I think, I think it it uh, it's a learned art. Um, I've I've almost become a, a professional at it. <laughs> you know, of course, uh, because if if there's something on my mind or something I really want to talk about, even if it's with people I don't see all the time, but I know them well enough to to know that uh, we can have disagreements without it coming to blows. And I will steer the conversation relatively quickly, and I notice that a lot of people do enjoy that because it uh, it gives them an opportunity to either agree or disagree, or uh, it it starts the conversation going instead of just sitting around wondering what to say and how many times they're going to say, "Boy, it sure is cold today," or "It sure is hot," or you know, I mean, that's all the the little fore talk, and somebody says, "Yep, sure is," and then there you sit, you know, with nothing to say. So yeah. once you open up a conversation that gets people's heads moving, and I notice that with, with men more so, uh, when they start to think about things, they come up with some pretty damn good uh, conversation, you know, whereas women just talk incessantly, uh, pushing their own narrative. But uh, with men, I notice that we do actually have a pretty good conversation, and you think about it afterwards, too, whereas a woman, when she's babbling on and on, you're just happy to get the hell away from her. Oh God, yeah, yeah. The, it, it, is it does it have to do with their uh, you, what women read? I was reading an article the other day about uh, and it was just some random article I ran into on the internet, uh, and it was a psychologist, and he was talking about uh, what do you call those books that they read? Those sex books that are like soft porn for women. Oh, uh, 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 Roman. Yeah, romance novels. <laughs> romance novels. Yeah, they. Uh, uh, he was saying like uh, ninety some percent, ninety two percent of women read no romance novels, and and if you ever read one of these things, they're just, they don't relate to life. They're fiction. It's not real. Uh, how are you going to take that out into real life if you're reading no romance novels? How you know you can apply that to some social situations within, uh, within uh, you know relationships, but. Short of that, uh, try it's, taking that to a party and talk about a romance novel. <laughs> it's a fantasy. It's a fantasy of uh, of the drama and the uh, uh, you know the the whole fiction of the romance, and it's not a real world. They can't live in no. the real world. This is why they talk. And listen, my wife used to do it with with her friends. They talk about soap operas, and I would run out of the room screaming. You know. Um, I don't care what Biff did to, to uh, you know, what's her name, uh, Tiffany or somebody or whoever. You know, uh, they talk about soap operas. They talk about what was on Ellen or on uh, some other friggin' talk show, Oprah oh, yeah. or whatever. Oprah shows uh, they shows. don't often find a, a subject of their own to come up with. They have to draw from TV or media, yep. you know? Yep, yep. Uh, <laughs> It very uh, unless they're gossiping about somebody, and it's usually hateful gossip. Uh, you know, the minute uh, one of them turns their back on each other, then uh, they, you know they get all catty and everything. And it's like, ah, shit, man, shut up, fucker. You know, let's let her go. Yeah. But uh, they don't. They don't live like that. And I notice that uh, a lot of women they like the horror movies uh, for some unknown reason. Oh, I, I can tell you why. I'm a huge horror buff, and. And after the uh, the red pill, once again, I look at horror movies in a completely different way. I think for the last twenty years, horror movies are almost like feminist propaganda because it's always <laughs> it's always a woman who starts off as this like you know, 
mousy yeah. thing. She goes through hell and back, and then kills the uh, the male murderer at the end. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the sci-fi movies. I do like the 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 brainless sci-fi movies that don't they don't. Uh, you just have to realize it. if you're sitting with someone and he's take, taking that seriously, like a Sharknado. Yeah, I was just gonna say the flying alligator shark yeah. uh, crocodile. Uh, oh, geez. That shit's just fun to watch because you know, you know, this is not real. It, it's just funny. You can laugh at it, and uh, it, 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 that's entertainment. You know, it's something to laugh at, some bizarre situation that you know is not real, but. Uh, a lot of these things, uh, like you said, they take seriously. It's the drama aspect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I do think it is, and I, I think that's why. And like uh, Misanthrope said, they uh, they don't come up with any of their own topics. They don't uh, veer from what they've been fed, uh, you know, and what they uh, perceive that life should be like. I mean, they they start to believe that life should be like these soap operas, you know, that. Yeah. Uh, it is constantly from from uh, day in and day out. And I, you know, I used to walk in the room a lot of times, and I'd say, you know, uh, she, she'd be watching intently, and I'd say, I thought they killed that bitch, you know, or something. And she says, Yeah, that's her sister. And I says, No, it isn't. It's her. I said, It's the same damn actress, you know. She says, Yeah, but she's wearing different clothes. I said, Really? I said, You believe that? <laughs> I said, It's the same friggin' woman, you know. She, don't you think? that her dead sister, if you will, ever changed her clothes? And how did that make her her sister? And where the fuck did she come from? Because she wasn't there before. And she says, shut up, shut up, I'm watching this. You know, you can't make sense to them. They don't want to hear it. No, yeah, fantasy fiction. I always say with uh, uh, it, it becomes a part of uh, social uh, culture and it becomes a part of our, our society. Uh, we can look back at... Uh, uh, Mary, Mary Wollencraft's, uh, uh, Mary Wollencraft being the first feminist, and she wrote this book, Mary, and then it went all, all the way to Congress, uh, Congress in Britain at the time, and then I stepped back and I say, you know, that fucking book's, that book's fiction. There's nothing real about that, but they all jumped in on this fantasy fiction thing, and uh, we see this in our culture. We see that with Mattress Girl. Mattress Girl made up a fantasy fiction story, and everybody jumped on it, in, like it was life, and we see this so often with women buying into fantasy fiction. I've got those, you know, I've got a closet sitting back in one of these rooms with probably 500 books in it, and not a one of them I would sit and read. Yeah. Yeah. You got you got one of those closets, Warhorse? <laughs> well, uh, no, I, I cleaned out the house, so you I've, I've gotten, yeah, I've gotten rid of all that kind of crap, and uh, my wife wasn't a big reader, you know. She uh, she actually didn't like it at all. I like to read, but uh, uh, you know, uh, she was uh, that TV fed, uh, that typical uh, American uh, yeah. upbringing in front of the TV, uh, you know, and believing certain things. So uh, that was that was her thing, and even my first wife, I think uh, uh, she was a little bit harder tougher girl, but uh, she still watch that soap opera shit and everything, you know, oh, so... I like it. Yeah, they uh, like it. So yeah. in the chat, they were bringing up, you know, uh, introverted women, and, and it's interesting because I've, uh, I've dated a lot of women where you, when you first meet them, they say something to the effect of, like, you know what, every once in a while I need my alone time, I need my solitude, and I'm like, I get stoked, I'm like, well, fucking A, I do too. I Perfect, right? Play. But guess what? Even if they're not social, they want you to be on call always so you would think that when they say something like that you go back to them later and say you know what i gotta get out of here for a weekend no offense to you i just want to get in my head uh no it doesn't work that way it's a lie when they tell you that they want their own alone time because they really don't so yeah they want, they you want to be, yeah go ahead yeah they want you to be the entertainment and uh, without that entertainment they feel they truly are alone without the male entertainment well, they want they want the 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 dog on the leash, you know. Uh, it's like go lay down over there, but when I want to pet you, they yank on the leash and yeah. get you to come over there, and uh, be at your beck and call, yep. and it it doesn't work like that, you know. Uh, it's it's okay if you go sit out on the porch, as long as you're within yelling distance or whatever. <laughs> yelling. Um, yeah, you know, 
Hey, honey, come here. You know, oh, fuck me, man. I'm on the porch. I'm, I'm reading a book or whatever I'm doing. Leave me alone, you know? And if you leave the place, then it's like, well, okay, now you're no longer at their call, you know? And uh, sometimes they get to that point, well, uh, they, they don't want you to go anywhere to have that alone time, but you're welcome to go crawl into a space that they're not occupying and be there by yourself, but within reach to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, that's the thing. It's uh, as long as they have you in their sights and control of what you're doing. You know, if you're sitting out on the porch, let's say, reading a book, well, they know that you're not out at a bar chatting up some other girl, which they all think that the reason you go to a bar is just to pick up pussy, you know. And uh, of course, all us men, that's all we ever do is go out to pick up pussy, right? Well, <laughs> No, it isn't, you know, and you try to tell them this shit. Look, I need to get the hell out of here, and I'm going to go have a drink, you know. Oh, what's her name? Oh, man, oh, piss off. Name? You know? yeah. oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. What's her name? When the fuck do I have time for what's her name? You know, <laughs> you don't You don't give me enough time to, to uh, blink my eyes here, and you think I got an affair with somebody? Holy fuck. Plus, you're keeping me broke, bitch. I couldn't afford another woman. So, but they don't look at it like that. They just don't. And, you know, so therefore, well, we must be lonely if we don't have that in our life. <laughs> yeah, okay, good good yeah. rationalizing. Good rationalizing. Yeah, I must be lonely because that isn't uh, affecting me every day of my life, driving me crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah. That says a lot about uh, female nature. I was just thinking about this the other day about... Uh, uh, that same thing. I say I want to go fishing for a, a couple of days. I wanted to go up to New York and, and hit the salmon run, or, or go out on the lake and just you know float around for a day or something. And uh, that's what I was doing. There was nothing. Uh, there was nothing immoral about it. But uh, with women, there's always something a little bit immoral about things. Uh, you know, they always interject. And what they do is they tell on themselves when they say those things. Uh, uh, there was always those comments. Uh, uh, where are you going? You're gonna go meet your girlfriend at the fishing hole? Really? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. No, I'm just gonna go sit on the bank, and if I put bait on my hook, that would be a major decision. <laughs> 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 and and uh, so so, and then I would look up and go, Why would you even think that way? Why would you think I was doing? Because that's the way they think. It was a, you know, given a, it. it if you let a woman go out for a weekend, you can rest assured that there's going to be something immoral she's doing, uh, because they figure that that's just you know because they do get saturated with these love books, these uh, these these mysteries and that stuff and the drama. What I've noticed with women is um, even married women, and I've talked to my wife. Uh, you know, of course, over a period of 28 years, we talked about just about everything, but. Uh, uh, I always said, listen, you know, you, you get kind of flirty when you go out with your sisters or the girls' night. You know, you have a girls' night out and everything. Mm -hmm. And she says, yeah, but that's okay. That's different because we're not going to go home with anybody. And I said, well, how is that different if I did it? Me and my buddies, we go out, we get flirty, we talk up a bunch of chicks, but we don't go home with them. Well, that's not okay. I said, how do you figure that? You know, where do you come up with that rationalization? I says, number one, you're not as strong as a man, so if you're going to prick-tease the guy and you prick-tease him too hard and he's drunk, you will probably have a problem, okay? Yeah. Now, if I do it to a chick and she gets pissed off, what is she going to do, throw a beer mug at me? You know, or, or maybe yeah. pull out a knife. <laughs> uh, you know, in my circles, that's not unheard of. Okay, so she pulls out a knife. I can still defend myself just fine. So uh, I said, there's a bit of a... Uh, a problem here with that way of thinking. As a plus, I says all you girls have either got a, a, a long-term boyfriend, a living boyfriend, or you're married and you're going out and you're prick teasing. I says I see a big problem with that. Well, none of them did. No, no, yeah, and it, it goes back to what we entertain ourselves is a, a garage, a ranch, uh, you know, putting some electrical wiring together, making a new motor work. Uh, you know, getting things running, uh, the, them sort of things. It's it's very uh, it, it's very non-sexual. It's we don't think about those things as much as they think we think about those things. Uh, oh, that's a fact. Yep. 
uh, they think, uh, you know, they, we get saturated in the media with men, you know, every oh, every 11 seconds. I can't remember what they say now is men are thinking <laughs> about sex. Jesus Christ, I'd get nothing done if that was true. <laughs> yeah, even even in my younger days, um, when I was at work or I was involved with a hobby or anything that I had a passion for, I was uh, consumed with that. Uh, that was the only thing on my mind. That was what I was doing. That is what I enjoyed. Uh, no excuses had to be made. I wasn't doing any, I had no ulterior motives. Now, when I went out, you know, of course, in my 20s, and then, yes, I was <laughs> trolling trolling for pussy, and I was thinking about it a lot. But yeah. uh, in later years, you know, in my <laughs> 30s and 40s and so on, I, uh, you know, if, if I go, uh, look, I'm going over to Joe's house, and we're going to build this uh, chopper, you know, and we've been working on it, and so we spend 12, 13 hours a day building this thing. Well, we're not talking about pussy. We're not doing anything, uh, you know, trying to find a woman. We're actually working on that thing, you know. Yeah, yeah we're, we're talking about done. thread size and, and what adhesives we're going to use and how we're going to bond these things and, and smoothness and, and, and sometimes very complex stuff. Right, know? and women don't get that because they don't think like that. Yeah, yeah. Even if I, man, I know if I if I paint my house, uh, and, and that's a difference, you know, between you know, if she paints her house, she's gonna slap some paint on there, buy some paint, and blah blah blah. Me, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna find the best quality paint, you know, the silicone bond. I'm gonna think about the fiber I'm uh, adhering it to. I'm gonna think about what caulking methods I'm gonna use. If I'm gonna use a 50 year or a 30 year or a 25 year, I'm gonna do an accounting situation. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna like, okay, what is this bond well to? What is this adhesive bond well to? I'm gonna do the chemical research, and then I'm gonna paint it, and it's gonna last for 25 years. Right, and we're we're totally engrossed in that type of. I'm totally uh, engrossed in it. Yeah, it's, you know, and it's women beautiful can't, stuff. Women can't be that committed to anything. And that includes the basic reason they can't be committed to us as well, because they can't commit to anything in they life. And you know, anything. look, uh, Mictow University here asks a good question: How is it that men from different walks of life have extremely similar experiences with women, also from different walks of life? And I got a, I got a quick answer, and I'll let you guys answer that too. But uh, it's because women are such good chameleons. They will uh, hang out and assimilate to whatever benefits them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we all have common shared experience. That's the great thing about MGTOW. When we hear it, uh, it goes back to that first day you were in MGTOW and you said, oh, my God, there's a bunch of guys out there that think like I do. And that's a shared experience because we're telling our shared experiences because, you know, they, it, 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 to the most apart, they are a Walt. They're all the same. They all think the same. And uh, these are things that we talk about that's going to happen in your life that we're all going to have the same shared experience. Yep. <laughs> but, but the women, uh, basically, uh, the women are the women, regardless of uh, if you get a, a high-class gold digger that just went out with the CEO of a company, she got dumped uh, for whatever reason, and now she's on the troll, and all of a sudden she meets a guy like me. I'm a, I'm a, in her eyes, a low life biker, but she needs a little bit of that excitement, you know, to get on the bike and uh, uh, what is it, born to be wild song going on in her head, and uh, you know, all of a sudden she's like, oh, you know, I need a leather jacket and this and that. No, it's the same woman, you know. It doesn't matter from what walk of life she came from. Men, we do live in different. Um, Oh, what do you want to call it? Uh, hierarchies or, or, or status in life, you know, and, and different groups that have uh, completely different outlooks. But women can monkey branch from one group to the next, to the next, to the next. You know, as, as I see it around here, one minute you got this chick and she's, uh, you know, dressing very nicely. There, uh, She's in a car, got a new car, driving a Mercedes. And then uh, next year you see her, she's with some guy. Uh, he's a toothless redneck, you know, he's got an airboat and he's, uh, yeah. you know, hunting and all this and she's wearing fatigues now, you know. And uh, then, you know, a couple of years later you see her and she's with some biker, you know. Now she's got the, the fringed leather jacket, the $300 boots and 
uh, it's like ah Jesus you know but it's the same woman underneath all that right she didn't very, change her attitude they're chameleon like uh, the whatever whatever the person right. or interest is in her life to fulfill some kind of uh, happiness and we hear this all the time with guys uh, she wasn't happy so uh, she moved on you know uh, uh, it was just a chameleon act to begin with. Yeah, she she wasn't happy because she wasn't herself. She doesn't know how to be herself, and and see that's one go. thing. That even in a blue pill, that I realized is I would go out and you know meet these women. They always they would quickly find what your interests were, and they would mirror it. But it was fake because once you're with them for a while, you realize they didn't like any of that shit. It was all a lie. So yeah, they're dabbling in it. <laughs> well, that's why I think women always try to change a man, especially after they marry him. Um, you know, best way to cure a woman in nymphomania is to marry her. Yeah. And, uh, well, the old joke is, you know, but um, it, it's true that uh, we don't want women to change, and they want us to change. And this is where the problem persists, you know, that <laughs> they want to bring us into their reality when we were being real all along, and they weren't. So right. uh, uh, who's, who's uh, playing who here? You yeah, know who's playing who? We see a lot of the books, kind of uh, the scientific books and the uh, and, uh, and the soft science books, kind of hit on the subject of women are uh, they they do interspecific human mimicry, and they they form and join with the groups, and then they extract what they can from the group, and then they move on. And a lot of the book I always like to give is a Southern culture book uh, by Nesbeth, and uh, after the uh, after during and after the Civil War. They found out that a lot of the the southern women take on honor, and that was a queer thing to see. And we, we still see movies made about that, the, where the proud, honorful woman was, uh, you know, in the Civil War, and she was, you know, by her man. And but but there's an interesting concept that goes along with it, and we just kind of we we hit on it, but we never really talk about it. In MGTOW, we talk about it a lot that they just mimic the situation, and they can do that temporarily. They can they can imitate yes. honor temporarily or imitate whatever they want temporarily to the point where they change their physical attributes. Yes, and they're very good at it, but that slowly dissipates over a over a period of time. It never it's never for real. Uh, it's never for a long period of time, and they always go back. You you always go back to what you are in life, and uh, that's why I say be yourself in MGTOW. Just be yourself. And that's the most honest thing you can ever be. Yeah, don't don't capitulate to anybody, really. Uh, and that goes for even other men. You know, uh, if you get yeah. involved with groups and uh, all of a sudden you get into this herd mentality, and you start uh, you start becoming a chameleon to the group, and uh, that group think is, uh, in hindsight, very harmful. You know, because it doesn't allow you to get in your own head to do that introspection that you need to do to be happy. Yeah. And I think also that uh, when they when they talk about uh, loneliness, it, it's a lot of guys are scared when they see the big picture. You know that they they're they're trying to grasp at too much too quick. They're not starting slowly with you know what some people call baby steps yeah, you know yeah. when uh, you don't look at the greater picture of of uh, look I, you know I want to live on a houseboat and uh, want to be by myself and everything and then you think holy fuck what does a houseboat cost where am I gonna get this money how am I gonna mm -hmm. do this no start slow man you know hang around the docks first uh, right, you know yeah. talk hang to people the get the culture <laughs> uh, see what it takes try to find a man that's done it Right. And learn from him, and, and oh gosh, it gets so much easier there because you got a, you got a script, you got a book, you got a, uh, you got a path right there that that you can learn from. Well, if if you're able to learn from that, you can. There's there's how to do it. There's the how-to manual. And men, we don't write, we do write these down things down to a point, but a lot of things that you're going to learn in life is from some guy, you know, your mentor figure or your your benefactor. That's done it before, right? And the thing is, too, to take that first small step, you know, not to worry about the big picture too much, and and right. just get out there and do it, you know. Because sometimes, look, I've had it happen to me in my life, 
to where uh, you know I'm talking to some guys. Look, I'd I'd really like to build this or do this and whatever else, you know. And I'm you know how how, how would I go about it or uh, you know anybody? And they'll say, hey, look, I know this guy that's got this thing and he wants to get off of it for cheap. You know, mm -hmm. it'll need yeah. a lot of work, but uh, uh, there you there, there you go. You know, it's uh, whether it be a car, or bike, or you know, or a house or or a houseboat. Let's say, you know, okay, so. Uh, they say, look, I know this guy. He's got this old jalopy houseboat down there, but it needs a lot of work, you know. So, yeah. all right, take that, take that step. Now you've made that connection. Yeah. Go look at it, and say, well, you know what? I could probably replace a lot of this stuff myself. Yeah, what and a great maybe, way to learn. Yeah, and then maybe sell the boat, make a little money, and buy buy a better one or move up. You know, and and instead of thinking about that that. $150,000 houseboat right off the bat do the the small start yeah. small but do it you know do it don't be scared because your mind is telling you oh that's way too much for me to handle all at once yeah because you're looking at the the end result the big picture that you might not even go to you might be on that old houseboat for a week and say you know what I get seasick every night yeah, this is for me. Not, yeah, maybe it's not what you want. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, men do the trade very well, and, and I want to, you know, bring that up with men. Uh, we trade, uh, we trade in barter. We work our way up. I watched a kid uh, in the neighborhood. I'm going through this with my son now too, uh, and it's two separate stories. But I watched him buy a lawnmower, and then. Uh, he traded that lawnmower and got a different lawnmower, and he found a bike, and he traded that bike, and he bought a bigger lawnmower. And then all of a sudden, he was doing lawns in the neighborhood, and then he traded up, and he traded up, and he worked up slowly, those baby steps. You look over a, across the street from me now, and he's got a decent, big, zero-gravity or zero-turn lawnmower and a bunch of equipment on there, but he didn't spend... He didn't go to the bank and take that loan. He didn't do that. He just did what men do. You trade up. You find other men with the equally right. on that level that work with you. And men are altruistic. They're always willing to give a – us older guys are always willing to give a younger guy a break and say, hey, why don't you take this lawnmower and use it or take this and uh, use it and get a start with what you're doing. Exactly. He's altruistic in a way. Now, my son just came over, and, you know, we talked about this before, Wars. For years, I've, I've been through. I started two businesses for him, and then he decided, well, that wasn't what he wanted to do. So, the other week, he came over and he says, "I did. I need this these equipment that you got." And I had a bunch. You know, I got a ton of equipment in my garage, and uh, so he took a he took a a, a motor, and uh, he took a a, a cle an extractor, and he took about three hundred feet of hose and a couple uh, a couple uh, things, and uh, and I was willing to give that for to him. And what he really wants is the truck. And, uh, and uh, I'm telling him right now, you can have these equipment and start small and see if you like doing that. And if you can make that into your business like, like I have, then come and get the truck. Right. And uh, let's talk about what we can do for each other here now. We're, we're very, very altruistic as men. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. It reminds me of uh, when I, I used to be a DJ, and when I bought my first set of equipment, they weren't. it wasn't a good set. Uh, but I quickly realized, well, if I learn on a bad set, right, I'll get good. And that happened to be true. So at one point I sold these turntables, and, but I wouldn't let the guy go for a while. I sat him down. I told him the stories of the turntables, the story of the music, or my yeah. passion for it at least, and I made it like a connection because, you know, obviously the set of turntables have become sentimental to me, a lot of stories and history behind it, and the, and the, the kid completely appreciated it. It, it. it made them more valuable to him, the, the set of turntables. Valuable, right. It, it, that's the thing. you got to appreciate something. Uh, uh, you know, if you got an old uh, ditch witch in your backyard that you, you you know is just sitting there rusting, that's gold to somebody. You know, <laughs> some guy wants to dig well, ditches with that and put. Not, that, not only that, Joe, but uh, and misanthrope. Uh, the thing is, a lot of guys feel intimidated. They look at what somebody else has. You know, let's take your son for instance. He's got this zero turn lawnmower now, and another kid will look at him and say, "Well, goddamn, I could do what he does, but I can't afford that lawnmower." They don't look at how he came to get that lawnmower yeah. by, uh, you know, working his way up to that. It's like saying, "Well, look at this guy; he's driving a Ferrari." 
Jesus, I could never afford a Ferrari. Well, you don't know what that man went through to get that car. You know, he yeah, may that, have. Uh, that have started with a Pinto. <laughs> yeah, of course. You know, and uh, the same thing. I mean, I keep going back to the houseboat analogy, and I don't know why I don't even like boats. But uh, you know, it, it's it's uh, looking at that and and saying it's so overwhelming, and I can't possibly ever afford that. If if you look at it from the ground up, this man might have started with a dinghy too, you know, right. and and gone up the, the pinto thing and and uh, these small baby steps that it takes to achieve something. If you only look at the end result of what other people have achieved, you're doing yourself a disservice by being intimidated by that. Right. Never Always be looking at the bigger picture. Yeah, men are, do great things. I remember this. Uh... At the shop, we were putting in these uh, this heat treating system. It was probably uh, it, it was almost a, a half a mile long or something, and they had these huge tanks and these huge burners and these huge uh, and, and there was a lot of machines that were involved with punching little holes and stuff. And uh, we, we had to wire it in. And I was working with the millwright crew at that point. And we the first day, all those men got together, and we all had our individual skills. And we looked at it, and we were looking at the uh, the schematics and what we needed to do and we were all like overwhelmed and we said oh Jesus and uh, how are we going to get this done in this uh, this two week period that we had yeah. the first step to doing that was just I, I, I know I remember this very well as I went and jumped on a tow motor I grabbed the first part and I put it and then a couple guys started doing their chains and then I was like okay I'm going to drop a line down and just do what I naturally do as a man and then all of a sudden, man, we were working, we were getting this thing done, and everybody was doing their thing, and it was a beautiful thing to see. That's how men work together. We all find our little spot, our little niche. And then yep. these overwhelming jobs, you know, these bridges don't get built because someone said, oh, no, no, I can't do that. No, this is the first guy just to take that first baby step forward and uh, picking up the wrench and going, okay, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm just going to jump right in here and just start doing it. And that's, that's right. Life's right. You like that, to, you know. The you have to thing. jump in. Yeah, don't be afraid. Uh, don't be as, afraid of the immense size of some projects, uh, because you, you tear them things down in little pieces and little pieces, and you start dissecting. You get that little piece done, and then it all starts falling in naturally in in place because this is the world we live in. This is how things work in the world we live in, and uh, all of a sudden you got this beautiful thing. And you can step back at the end and go, fuck yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and it always does come together. No matter how overwhelming the, the project looks at the beginning, when, you know, when I built my first drag car, my first pro drag car, uh, looking at the rule book and what was required to do and, and uh, all these specs and everything else was so overwhelming, even to me as a professional auto mechanic at the time, uh, it, it was like, oh my God, I, I'm never going to achieve this. But uh, between networking, and we do network very well as very men, well. yeah, uh, uh, maybe differently than women do, but we network very well with other men, and we are willing to share experience with other men if we're asked. You know, we we usually don't give the advice if we're not asked, but if you talk to somebody in the know of whatever else you're doing they tend to help you and then you start breaking it down but the thing is that you have to start on it you have to start right. and like swine dog says he says I need to learn to break things down into manageable pieces manageable like that pieces yeah it actually it is and it's just by starting by starting and seeing what what is it I need to do first you know and then, okay, I need to get the interior out of this car. Hey, quick, good enough. You know, that's the starting block. Now, after you've got it out, okay, I need to cut the floor out here. Let me talk to somebody. How much do I need to cut? And they tell you, oh, behind the front seat post. Oh, okay. Boom. You know, I, and, and things start happening. It, it just falls together so nicely. Yeah. And when you're done, you're like, holy fuck, I can do this better. And again... I can and, do it better than they do it in, in, in yeah. Right. I, now that I understand what's going on, it's a piece of cake. But, oh, was that intimidating to begin with? And yeah. 
but you know, I'm kind of headstrong in that degree where I say, you know what, fuck it, I'm doing this. <laughs> I don't care what happens, I'm doing it. You know, come hell or high water. But huh. I'm built like that. Uh, a lot of guys aren't, and like they look at the end result and they're like, oh, I could never build a thousand horsepower engine. Yeah. But like hell, you can't. Like you you yeah, sure yeah. as hell can. If I can do it, you can. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't don't settle for what life presides you with too. If I want a thousand horse engine, I I do it myself, and and that comes. I make it true into fruition. I bring it into fruition. Uh, I just went through this with a, a power washer. I'm looking at the power washers on online and everything, and I'm seeing uh, these got you know the two the regular you know CC small CC engines. They're all kind of generic and everything. So I went over the Amazon, and uh, I know my skill set. Uh, and I says, okay, well I can get this 14 horse engine here, and then I can put get put this seven and a half pump on there with the three quarter for half the price. Yep. So I put it together, and then I, I brought it out to my garage, and oh, now I have to make a frame and a platform. So I, I welded the frame and the platform together. I bought the hoses, and they were uh, they're really good hoses. They're great. And then I bought the extension. You know what I did this for? I did this so I can clean my gutters out <laughs> 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 without having to go up on a ladder. <laughs> and so, so now I just in, in the whole project, what I spent on that project building it myself. And building a power washer myself was it came out to like almost 500 bucks every but if I would have bought that power washer online or, or from Sears or something that would have cost oh, me yeah. 13 14 1500 bucks easy easy and it probably works better to your liking oh yeah just I started up it's great motor I, I did I did a lot of research well I didn't do a lot of research I did some research on the uh, on the motor sizes and the in the, the valves and everything and uh, it, and it, it just worked out a lot better but there was a, a rewarding feeling after that too of uh, yep. uh, and how do, and uh, you know it brings us back to the point how do you get lonely when you're doing and involved with things <laughs> like that all the time you know uh, I mean uh, come on, guys, <laughs> you know, or, or whoever's out there, you know, accusing uh, MGTOW of being lonely. Yeah. There is no reason to ever be lonely, man. you you got so many things that, and I bounce around uh, nowadays between projects, you know, whether oh, it's yeah. uh, the paneling I've done in my house, you know, or uh, 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 things outside yeah, or, or the, the paneling, yeah. The, the cars, the bikes, and, and, you know, then I get into this electric weed or uh, yard equipment. You know, and I'm I'm gearing up for that, and I'm doing different things with it. I'm constantly I've constantly got something to do, and yeah. I enjoy it. Uh, I don't really have the time to be lonely. No, I have no, the time no, that I it's take. Little things too. Think about the things in your life that are just there that you can do. There's a million things. It's like a Home Depot. Your life is like a Home Depot, and there's a million things you can do. Uh, you know what I just seen a guy do? Uh, it, it was the coolest thing too. He, he you know, he's gonna go out and buy a stove, and uh, a regular kitchen stove. You know, the generic uh, GE four burner. You know, right, right, yep. And uh, he's kind of a social guy, and he has a lot of parties. He said, and then he sat back and he says, Joe, you know, I don't want one of those stoves. You know what I really want? I want one of those old-fashioned stoves with a big, uh, big oven on top of it, the solid metal with the. Uh, with with the baker thing with the air that flows to it and everything. Oh so he, yeah, yeah. He went and bought one. It was like a 1950. This huge. It was mammoth. It was like <laughs> it had six burners and this flame unit on the side and a grill. But it was a piece of junk. He brought it home, took it apart, repainted everything, went and bought the parts. Uh, it moved it into his house. The fucking thing looks great. Everybody comes in and they go, "Wow, that's unique looking. Where would you get that?" He says, "Well, I got it out of the garbage." <laughs> yep. Yes, sir. Yep. And, and look at the 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 funny hat doing it. The the uh, you know how, how again? How do you get lonely when you've got these type of things? When you're uh, a man, then you can that, you have those skills. That that it's filling your mind up. You know, with even questions. You know, let's say he's got a bunch of wrought iron. How do you restore wrought iron? You know, well, sandblasting it. All right, let's get a little sandblasting nozzle. You know, and. Uh, what whatever it takes to do it, uh, these things take so much time up that uh, literally you almost have to make yourself be lonely, you know, to uh, and and not care about anything. And I think that's maybe the apathy part is what gets some people where they just don't give a damn, and then they say, 
you know, well, I don't care about anything. I don't want to do anything. And, uh, you know, they, they get into this, uh, yeah, you know, life sucks. And, of course, it does at times. And we all go through that. But it it's that drive that you need. You, you've eventually got to say, you know what, uh, let's just go and take a walk. You know, go through the woods uh, and or wh wherever you're at, you know, take a walk and uh, start to get some fresh air and look at things a little bit differently. So uh, there, there's never a good excuse to say that you're lonely. You don't need a woman or anybody in your life all the time. It's just not necessary. Well, as you were... It's about, I think part of it is about introspection. People fear being alone because you're, it gives your brain a chance to maybe present some uh, some other kind of problems, you know, metaphysical or mental problems will pop up. So if you don't keep yourself busy or if you don't surround yourself with people, that's bound to happen, and that's a good thing. And it may be a painful thing, but I think introspection is is important. And I, But I because it's important, it's something to be feared, you know. So. Yes, yes, and I think honesty when you're doing an introspection, be honest with yourself. Not, not the bullshit you tell other people. Not the picture that you might want to paint of yourself. When you're doing introspection, you need to be brutally honest. Yeah, and, and that's say, why people yeah, fear yeah. loneliness. You know that I think that's what it really comes down to. A lot of people fear that style of loneliness because I mean. Uh, if, if you st and and it's required. So, for instance, say like uh, we've talked a lot about you know projects and and whatnot and the importance of that, and it is important. However, if you're constantly distracting yourself with you know productive things or you know you know just entertainment, whatever, uh, and you fail to introspect, uh, you're gonna have some bigger problems later down the line. Absolutely, you know. No doubt, you hit on a very important topic there. And I don't think that by any means we're saying that you should constantly distract yourself to keep yourself from having any feelings or introspection or quiet time. And yeah. that's why we say when you're alone, in almost like a meditative state, if you will, yeah. where you are uh, reflecting on your life, where you're thinking about things. You're thinking about uh, futures and pasts and uh, uh, the things that are going on at the present moment, you're you're doing all these things. You have to do those things, and by no means does that mean you need to be out there doing a project or or keeping your hands busy or you know uh, you need that quiet time. And this is what I think uh, we kind of veered from that subject that you know loneliness and being alone. Are, uh, that's where the difference is because being alone can mean you're either doing a project or getting involved with something or mm -hmm. that you're doing that introspection that calm uh, realistic look into your own being and your life right yeah because well we, we have to live with the what what applies to your life too. what application you're looking for an application a problem a, 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 something to solve everything's something to solve once I find that application that uh, that, that drags it over into the real, into my life, this private time, this introspection I'm doing. I'm not doing an introspection for nothing. I'm, yeah. I, I'm, I'm doing it for something. I'm, I'm, I want to get to that goal, and I want to drag that an application over to... Once that clicks, I go, oh, yeah, and then I can jump up out of my, my relaxed state and do something. But it's that point between... Uh, if you're meditating or doing them sort of things and you're just kind of lazily looking at a wall, you're not doing nothing really uh, that's going to apply to the real world. Uh, and, and that's a good point because, I mean, with some things, you can actually bring the two together. You can introspect while you fix a bike or, or whatever project. Right. And the interesting thing about that is that is Zen. When you can actually, that's yeah, that's, you know, that's you're that in moment. the moment, and you and like say like it's a bike or or uh, you know what turntables. I'll I'll, I'll keep it real. Yeah. You know, so I'm I'm doing yeah. my thing, right? It's I guess it's supposed to be distracting, but sometimes you see the pattern 
uh, in the music or it, whatever you're doing, you see a pattern like, oh my god, this mechanic works in that way and blah, blah, blah. That's a lot like how I am with this. or And you just see all these patterns. You really become zen and one with the action. And if you, you know, so you can actually be part meditative and introspective and then also productive or, or what have you. So, but I, I don't know that that's an accident. I mean, it, you got to no, get no a kind of mind frame yeah. for that, you know? So, right. You have to know your stuff, be true to yourself and say, Hey, what exactly when you're doing that, you said it, you nailed it before. Like sometimes that's a painful thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, sometimes uh, something I'm not, I, oh, man, I want to be an astronaut, but I'm not an astronaut. Yeah. Uh, what I am as an electrician, what, I, what, what makes you happy? What things do you do naturally in life? And then you sit down, do those calm moments of introspection with yourself and say, these are my skill set. You know, these things are always going through our mind. We can't turn off our mind totally. We can re reduce the garbage outside of our mind. And that's when you get that true feeling like, okay, now A to Z, I start seeing shapes and figures in my head, what matches, what doesn't match how this thing could go naturally in the world that I live in, and I always put something together. Exactly. Because I give, I, I cut those, cut those, uh, that static that you hear, that we hear, that's important to cut all that static out, and them are the moments just by yourself, looking at yourself, being what you are, and then all that static goes away, and you can hear yourself a lot clearer. Some great things have probably come in this world from just, Okay, yeah, I'm not listening to garbage. There's no woman yelling at me. The, all that static from uh, other people, the family situations, knock that shit off. You know, uh, just sit there with yourself. Maybe even if even if that's you know tinkering with something that you enjoy doing or moving some uh, some pieces around a board game or whatever you you do to relax yourself. Get to that relaxed state. Be honest with yourself, and then take that outward. And, and, you know, sometimes, you know, I can actually speak from experience. Just the other day, I was really meditating on, uh, you know, what I want to do from here on out. So I'm 36, you know. I'm about to be midlife, whatever. The the past behind me, it's actually fantastic. I've got one of the most interesting fucking stories I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, yeah. So that's fine. But, you know, now moving on, I'm, I'm thinking about these things. And, and I realized that I have no ambitions or dreams that involve the career path or you know something like that what which makes me a utility like I'm right. complacent with the fact that I might do odd jobs for the rest of my life whatever um, and when I realized that I try to mess with it I, I didn't accept that right because what was happening is like oh I have no ambition I lack value to to everyone to society to the world I have no value so I tripped out and before you know it I'm on websites looking at schools you know, and 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 then I realized the second thing. You know what? Every single class I actually want to take, but I don't care about the degree and I don't care about a career path. So all I want to do is just fucking learn. I want to and, learn, yeah. And I had to sit with those thoughts because it it went back to the mirror of society telling me, well, if you don't have ambitions uh, that are involved in work or something productive or utility, then you are of no value. And finally accepting that was like, you know what? I don't have that, and I can't lie to myself. Maybe I want to be a bum. I mean, and, 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 and I, that's, I'm using that as an example because that's a word that the world could use on me, right? But no, I'm good with doing odd jobs for the rest of my life. I'm good, you know, I have big projects and other things on the side, but none of them are going to make me money or, or send me down a path to get a house and this, that, right. and the third. And, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. So. Yeah, and how do you apply things that you may learn? You're going to apply these things, and there's a difference in some men. Uh, and, and most women uh, that they can go to school for four years, come out of that school and say, "What am I going to do?" <laughs> you just learned yeah. everything, and but they never took that time to apply one thing to life, and and uh, what they honestly wanted to do. And there's a zillion things. Honestly, there's a zillion. It, uh, the example I always give is walk around a Home Depot for an hour. And look at every project and say to yourself, can I sell that project? Can I sell that? Can I make that something with that? Or can I do this and then move on to the next one? By the time you're done walking through the Home Depot, you got a million ideas for what you can be in life. Yeah, yeah. And all you got to do is learn one of those. Learn one of those things and apply it to 
who you are and what you do very well in life because each one of us do something very well and that's the hardest thing to get across to people sometimes well the other question you have to ask yourself when going through Home Depot specifically which we all know that's our our toy store you know yeah, that's our toy uh, store. for most of <laughs> most of us guys that's our toy store and you know we, we walk through there and, and you think you know what am I passionate about what 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 I enjoy doing if you don't know you know I have yeah. no problem walking through Home Depot or any tool place or what have you uh, and I know exactly what my passions are I've already figured that out but to those that haven't you gotta say well you know do I like that cool looking wood or that uh, engraving on on the metal or do I you know uh, like how this is put together do I like uh, these lighting fixtures or the interior design I mean there's so many different possibilities and find something even if it's gardening and people they put down gardening and look I'm not a big gardener you know or anything like that but I know men that have built gardens oh, oh my yeah. god holy yeah, shit I mean the red that. brick raised areas and and you know they look like they're worth a million dollars and uh, th that kind of gardening might be over the top for some people but it's still their passion you know it's their hobby they enjoy that and they get to work with their hands they get something in the, in the end result that says uh, uh, look at this you know and, and people are actually impressed by it and you know these uh, most of the people I know aren't trying to impress somebody with what they've created they are like uh, kinda like me I, I intend to impress my myself first and foremost that's all that matters to me if I'm impressed I'm very happy if other people see the value in it or they like it or they compliment it well okay that's just uh, an added little cookie there uh, and sure it makes me feel good when somebody else appreciates something I've done but it was me if I didn't appreciate it and I didn't like it it means right. nothing to me I don't care if everybody else in the world likes it so you gotta have that little bit of that passion for something and once you find that and I've seen guys that that uh, you know when they retired uh, they'd been office workers you know white collar guys and everything else and all of a sudden they started taking up woodworking you know and they go into places like Harbor Freight where you can buy a lot of stuff for cheap oh, yeah. you know? the other toy it's store. Not, yeah yeah <laughs> it's not professional grade stuff you know but it's, it'll do for the home hobbyists and very nicely so without putting out a lot and some of these old guys I call them old and I should talk but they they uh, uh, found this passion even that late in life you know to where people were like oh man can you make me one of them I'll, I'll pay you whatever you want you know and they make these beautiful things that they never ever made in their life before and they feel so much more fulfilled doing that now than all the years being in their business suit making deals and making money they're happier now yep. and you yeah. see it especially in my money. age group you know that yeah. uh, you're I'm around a lot of people that are retiring just retired or uh, uh, into it a few years so I'm seeing all these differences and a lot of men that are just retiring are lost they're they're literally lost even if they're married or uh, you know a lot of them do take up uh, relationships once they retire because they are so lost they're so lonely what they identified themselves to be is now lost it's gone they're no longer that person so uh, they they do come around and I've seen this time and time again I've I, even with myself uh, it takes you a while to acclimate to that and then to find out what it is you want to do so it's never too late you know, like misanthrope you know you say hey you want to learn these things for the sake of learning man go for it go for all of that because someday it'll just hit you upside the head and say hey <laughs> you know this is what I want to do and yeah. you can yeah. fall back on so many things that you've learned throughout your life you know that that will fall into place with maybe that one thing where the light bulb goes off above your head that's that's uh it'll happen it, it happens to almost everybody unless you've just literally given up on life and you've got a death wish I mean that's the <laughs> extreme the extreme other end but for most people and most men they do get that that second wind if you want to call it that that drive again that that to find that passion 
even if it's something that they didn't think initially was like, eh, you know, I really don't want to get dirty doing gardening or woodwork or whatever, you know. And I see it where the guys, they get into antique show cards, you know, and they get involved in a club with other old retired guys. Mm -hmm. And they're driving around these 67, 68 Chevelles and uh, Camaros and Mustangs and they're going to car shows and they're going and working on cards with each other. Man, you know, these guys got a dick, man. They got a dick. You know, after a lifelong of never doing that, now they're here. So yeah. uh, things will always change. Yeah, and embrace the change. Passion, whatever passion you cho chose at, at a certain point, uh, that is you, whatever that is, you can, you, it could become a job, it could become a, a hobby, it could become something bigger depending on depending on your drive but always take that first step you know what I do sometimes uh, it, it, and it was a very queer thing for me at, at first when uh, when I first started into the business that I do now and uh, the guy that was mentoring me at that point he says well let's take a ride Joe and we took a ride around the neighborhood and he says what do you see and I see I, I just see a bunch of houses and a bunch of people he says no look at this and he says, that guy needs his gutters cleaned. And he says, look, that guy's fit windows are falling off. I said, start noticing those things in your life. He says, that guy's uh, gutters hanging. That guy's roof needs repaired. That guy needs new siding. That guy, and the more you do that, it opens up a whole broad, uh, a whole broad interest in what can I do for my community and what am I good at. Yeah, that's it. What am I, I good at? It. I can see it now. I can see the need for me. And then the need for me is great in my community. It's uh, it's interesting that the, the first thing so my, my stepfather, he, he he was real big on, you know, getting me chores, you know, as soon as he hit up the picture and I wasn't used to that with being with the single mom of course, but one of those things was yard work. All kinds okay. of yard work, right? And at first it was novel. I'm like, oh cool, yeah, blah blah blah. And then I hated it. I was a t I got got to be a teenager, fucking hated it. And then somewhere down the line, the all the fights and this, that, and the third, um, I start to get it into it. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna enjoy it. And so before you know it, like even when, when I was mowing the grass, I used to do patterns. And I get so proud after I did oh, this yeah. really weird pattern. I imagine being in a plane looking down on it, you know, pointing it out like, Hey, gee, you know, I actually dig this and it's interesting. So, so many years later, guess what my Zen thing is? It's yard work. It's simple yard work, it, landscaping, whatever it is. That's now my Zen. Like, oh, cool. making something heavy beautiful. rocks from yeah. one place to another, digging in the dirt, whatever it takes, you know, like that's my Zen now. So, yeah, but the, yeah, there's a thousand million trillion different things to do. Uh, you, you're you not just confined to your, uh, your area, too, you're not confined to your neighborhood. The business, you go into the business, uh, take that same attitude. And you walk down the business alleys of most of us live in town, small towns where you're going to go, and that's where the business sector is. And just walk around there and go, what do these people need? What what can I do that's me? And then you start seeing, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this, and I could do this. Just start asking yourself those questions. Do those introspections. I, a lot of guys come around here and they say, uh, Say I need a job. I need to do this, and I knew this. And but, but did you do that introspection on yourself? What can you provide? And did you walk out into that neighborhood and that community and look at what they need? Yeah. And they all need something. Everybody needs something. Jesus, in my life, I had to turn my phone off at one point in my life because uh, I was answering the phone. I told this to Warhorse. I'd pick up the phone and go, "What do you need?" <laughs> <laughs> and I, I had to turn that off because. There wasn't a lot of these guys like me, and there wasn't a lot of uh, people like me, but that came from seriously just sitting back. And I don't do what I, what I went to college for. I don't do that no more. Uh, that, that was that lost period of time where I wasn't doing what I was in life. Uh, you know, Now, when, when I started doing what I am in life, things started working more natural within the world and within these confines with these when these within these uh, these atoms and these molecules that you know provide us with this world once I started working within that framework boy I was a better person and happier 
You know what you just said really sit in, and I think it's the most brilliant thing I've heard in a while. Like uh, when I walk out my door today and walk in my neighborhood or drive around, I'm gonna be looking out for like the gutters and shit now. And I don't think I've ever <laughs> really thought yeah. about it that way. That's brilliant yeah. though. It's like a don't mindfulness the, of your area, yeah, your a mindfulness of of what you can do and what what would you, yeah. It don't take nothing to clean gutters. You get sixty bucks to clean. I don't know what in your area you have to clean gutters out, but right now around this time of the year. Oh yeah. You get sixty. Just walk up to the house. Be brave. Be that man. Uh, Say I'm going to be that that guy, and if I make ten thousand bucks over the next, uh, uh, you know, the next two months doing this, that's fine. I can transition now and use that same idea into the next transition of the next period of uh, time in uh, in in whatever seasonal thing that's happening. And that's what I try to tell my son: are that things are seasonal. Pick four or five things that you're good at. You know, right now it's gutter cleaning. Uh, everybody, every old lady and every man, every old man, that and, and most people will not put their hands in there and will not do that. But hey, there's a thousand things. Do that. Do that. Look that. What when when you go out into your society, just don't. And they always say you're you're missing the forest for the trees, you know, or you're missing well, the variety. Trees for the forest. Also, remember, variety is the spice of life. You know, yeah. there's a lot to that saying, which means that. If, if you do find something you're passionate about and then you do it constantly, you do it so much that you become, uh, you, you burn out on it. You right, just, you uh, you're, 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 you become to hate the thing that you used to love, you know, that, uh, that takes the passion out of you, it burns you out, uh, you run out of steam and now you no longer want anything to do with it whatsoever. So variety. Is uh, you know there were a couple of years that I decided I was going to drive an 18 wheeler. I, I didn't want to get greasy anymore, and I was already at the top of my game in the mechanical field, and I drove an 18 wheeler for uh, professionally for yeah. a few years. So um, it was a great experience. Did I love it as much as I did working on machines? No, I, I didn't, and I went back to it. But I've done a lot of things. I've operated heavy equipment. I've done carpentry work uh, back when Houston was Boomtown, and there was no other work but construction. I drove a cement mixer. Uh, all these things gave me a background of uh, other things that were applicable. And yeah. uh, you know, when I got to the point with the mechanical stuff, where I says, you know what, I don't know if I want to be a grease monkey. And uh, you know, that's a derogatory term, and and we in the field say it jokingly. Uh, it takes way too much intelligence to be a mechanic on today's cars than than ever. But uh, you know, I, I didn't want to be uh, like the rest of my life in that field, or so I thought. So I wanted to try something else. Never be afraid to try the other things right. and break it up a little bit. Because when you go back to what you know, I had to admit, like, hey, you know what? I really do love working on shit and cars, bikes, and being a machinist and so forth. I really do love that. I went back with twice the gusto that I had yeah. to be, begin yeah. with. If so I can make my always, hobby my job, that's that's the beautiful thing. <laughs> right, and and like I said, variety. You know, uh, uh, break it up a little bit, and it keeps you from burning out. Now, eventually, I did burn out because I I overdid right. it, and I have a tendency out. to, uh, you know, go with something with such. Uh, 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 forever and steam that eventually there's nothing else you can do but burn out you know it's like re-entering the earth's atmosphere without any shield obviously you hit it right and that, that's it for you so but that was my own fault you know I had to have two of my own businesses I had to have this view child you know everything just bunched up and after a while I said all right fuck this I'm done with it now I did retire so I can't really complain about it but keeping it loose, keeping it freer, and you know, and like I said, making that first step into anything. It's never yeah. really as big of a challenge as what your mind tells you it is, because your mind is actually keeping most people, or if in most people, should I say, our minds are holding us back by telling us we can't do it, or it's too much, or it's whatever, you know, or uh, I'll end up in this situation. No, you don't know this until you've actually tried it. Take yeah, the first take step. That first step into yeah, creative idea. Do the self introspection. Find out what you like to do because that's the important part in life. 
is, is being happy with what you do and then that will you know that will radiate over everybody and everything everybody you meet it just radiates he's passionate about that he likes doing it uh, I, most people would rather have somebody around them that likes doing what they do and talks about it all the time and is passionate about it than some workman coming in their house going oh yeah I gotta do another one of these <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even if that's yeah. from a, a simple replacing toilet lines yep. and, and, and water saving stuff, you know, to uh, place some mown faucets, to replacing doors, or, uh, you know, I keep five doors around of a certain variety of sizes. It, it just, you know, just to, it's because I know winter's coming and there's going to be 10 calls. You know, it's just, man, it, and it don't take nothing to, to, to do that. Uh, just it, it, it's all about you now as a MGTOW. It's, yes. It, it, you're not uh, doing that for everybody else. You're not stuck in this thing where uh, where you're not bored. limited. You're, you're not, not limited to anything. Like I said, those mountains. When you get to that precipice and you look out over those mountains of your life, that the places I can go when I get to that precipice, that looks pretty scary. But the first step is always like, okay. I'm gonna hurdle that motherfucker right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna transverse that motherfucker, and uh, that would make me feel good. Uh, don't turn back and go to town, because you're gonna get that same shit in town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's uh, you know, uh, all these different options we have, uh, especially if if you're MGTOW, you know, and and you're in charge of your own life. The options that are available to us. Are limitless, and uh, the the limits that we put upon ourselves are the ones holding us back. And once you get past that point of saying, you know what, I'm just going to try this, and, and you know what, you you may fail, and ask a winner any time, and they'll tell you they've lost, they've lost before. Every winner has lost, you know, and every every uh, success story has failed more. Than they've ever succeeded, you know. The success only comes once. Well, if you're lucky, maybe more. But you will fail time and time and time again. But if you don't try, how the fuck do you know? And how will you ever have a, a success if you didn't try and have the failure? And every failure is a learning. It's the learning experience. Yes, yeah, experience. Of it is a competition of uh, information. I see Stupidest things. I, I see some people selling or doing some of the stupidest things that that I don't understand, but it makes money for them. I mean, I see women selling candles online and they're making good money. I mean, jeez. But yeah, they did. They followed their passion, whatever it is. I see guys, <laughs> yep. you know, selling skull heads online that they built in their house, you know, for Halloween. They, you know, well, yeah, you, you, it's anything. It's it's wide and it's vast. Uh, we get stuck down into these uh, these so and it starts from schooling tool to you know we we get stuck in okay we're gonna learn the three hours reading writing and math and that's where your life's gonna go uh, there's much more to it out there uh, and you know the uh, application and how you apply it to life is everything and oh that, sure that's sure starts and with, you know you need a good basic uh, education and an understanding of it. Uh, I never liked math when I was in school, but once I got into the machining end of my business, a machinist has to be able to do math. And uh, once you understand how to relate the math to what you're doing, it becomes extremely interesting. And the yeah. learning the learning curve is almost non-existent. It's like, whoa, man, I'm just picking this up left and right because I enjoyed what I was doing. Uh, so sometimes, you know, right, but yeah. the basic education of, you know, addition, uh, subtraction, and division, so on and so forth. Reading, of course. Uh, oh, there's a little skill involved uh, you with need, a lot of things. Yeah. You need, yes, that basic, basic education. Yeah, basic common sense. Uh, you know, I watched this guy once, uh, and I, I think I told this story uh, before. We, we used to drink with this guy at the bar. Nobody knew what he did. And he had a, he, when we were kids, he would run around with a welder on the back of his truck and he started taking jobs for bridges welding those little trusses underneath uh -huh. it was hard work and uh, he stepped back one day and uh, we didn't know this he says you know I can prefabricate these things in a 
in a shop, and and he did it. And uh, one day we're all drunk, and he says, "Hey, Joey, I gotta go to my uh, my shop. Can you run me by my shop for a minute?" And we all thought that it was some little dumpy little shop, and uh, we didn't realize that it was a mega complex employing 400 people. Oh, jeez. <laughs> This little thought he had one day about pre he got all the contracts for the state, and uh, he made that little idea from the back of his truck into. It, I'm not saying that you're gonna. That's common in life, but the littlest thing, the littlest idea, can be a can, can be a start to your mega corporation. Oh yeah, <laughs> and you know what? It doesn't always. Well, I'll tell you what. I know more people that have made it big, and I'm talking multi-millionaire people, uh, I know them personally, so I'm not talking out my ass here, that had only a high school education, yeah. and some of them actually dropped out a year early, uh, and no higher education, then are this successful in running some of the biggest companies in this oh, country, yeah. and uh, that always kind of made me think, and look, I, I went a couple of years to college, you know, I, I was going for a degree in psychology, and I, I realized that, you know what, I just don't give a shit about other people that much to keep that, going yeah. with this. <laughs> I'm not going to listen to everybody whining all day long, so I quit, you know, and I dropped out, and uh, I, I thought about it later on, too, is uh, that guarantees you nothing. It guarantees you nothing. Having nothing. that higher education, the, the piece of paper on the wall shouldn't impress anybody. Yeah. It uh yes, there are certain certifications that you want certain people to have. Like your doctor, for instance, or your surgeon. You would want him to be certified and that he knows what he's doing, hopefully. hopefully. Uh or you know, or or anybody, your lawyer or anything like that, you know, where you got people and even uh dare say your mechanic, you know, you want some type of formal training there. But higher education uh, as a blanket higher education, like four years of college, you know, yeah, that, look, we talk about gender study degrees, you know, there's your college education, what does it mean? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, Nothing. It, it, it won't, degree. They, don't, they don't even want to hear that at McDonald's, you know, so why uh, all this thing, you can learn so much more, what I like to call the school of hard knocks, uh, as the best teacher out there. Life will teach you things, but you do have to apply yourself and go out there and try. Take that first step. It's That's what it's all about. And again, how do you get lonely? All these things we've been talking about. Who has the time to get lonely here, Joe? A misanthrope? Anybody? No, <laughs> Somebody tell me. How do you get lonely? Just thinking about this would keep you busy <laughs> or your mind busy for the next week, right? Uh, no time to get lonely, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is a pretty interesting place around here. If you looked around what just happened this week in MGTOW, the, that's a that's a pretty fine entertainment with the with the thunder thunderfoot stuff, and then the uh, the welcome MGTOWs to the Karen yeah. Karen uh, honey badger stuff, and I don't want to yeah. get into that stuff. But uh, man, that's uh, you know. It, that was a pretty entertaining, and that's what we come here for, some little entertainment and, and do that and try to get our points across to men and save a few men along the way, you know. Uh, and it opens up the conversation, and it yeah. keeps us busy. It keeps our, our minds working, our yeah. minds going. Uh, yeah, even if you know, that's we're it. spouting off uh, ad hominems. If uh, you think these things through and then you talk them through, uh, it, it, and yes, you're right. This week has been uh, thoroughly entertaining, <laughs> to say the <laughs> least. <laughs> it was funny. It was a funny week. We were we were uh, upset there for a while. We were glad, yeah. happy. We went through the spectrum <laughs> of emotions, and, uh, <laughs> just to say, oh man, how how silly was that? How silly is it all? But uh, man, there's some real stuff in life uh, that, that that we can do. Uh, uh, computer skill sets. When you when you look at your uh, computer. When you're doing this, what do you see? I see business opportunities. I see, uh, I, I see a whole vast world of, of sales I can do. Uh, I don't do those things for a living because I suck at sales. Otherwise, my, my <laughs> I would be I would be the the Sandman of SEO if I if I did understand those things. I don't understand them, but it doesn't mean I can't see 
the opportunity in this. If you're not a worksman, if you're not a craftsman, if you don't work on cars, if you don't work on boats, if you can't put these things together, what do you see directly in front of you right now, right at this moment? I mean, I see a ton of shit laying on my desk that I could sell, do, be, uh, and oh, that's yeah. all you. That's well, that's all you in life. That's taking that introspection of yourself. Well, I think, Joe, you and I come from a different uh, school of thought, or let's say a very uh, two-dimensional in our reality, because we work with our hands. You know, we're, we're tradesmen, yeah. uh, we're professionals at this, and so we, we constantly spout off about these things, which may not apply to a lot of a lot of people or guys out there because they don't work with their hands uh, they don't have it in their blood so to speak and that's something I think you and I have and uh, you know it, it's got to be in your blood to work with your hands and to be good with it to have that that somehow I hate calling it gifted or gift that yeah. uh, that, that thing that you just have I don't know where it comes from but some people don't have it and there are so many other options available. Oh, millions of not. other options. Yeah, you don't have to be stuck into the tradesman stuff, you know. Just do an inspection of your general area right now. Right. And look right. around. And there's there's a thousand things right in front of you. Like I, I'm looking at a. I think I talked with a misanthrope about this one, or maybe it was a, no, it was a, one of the other guys about. I look at the doorknob, on the door, and what do I see? I see a locksmith. I see selling doors. I see installing doors. I see selling doorknobs. I see I see a lot of different things. And just little, that little thing. Mm -hmm. There's a multitude of things. You know uh, what? What else is in front of you? Pens, pencils, papers, uh, uh, me cigarette butts. Uh, you know, you know, all these things. I don't know if cigarette butts are. Uh, you know, I could sell those, but I could think about it. So, <laughs> well, be, if I could well, sell if, them, I would. <laughs> if, if they were, if they were new ones, you could sell them. Yes, yeah, but not them, used yeah. ones. <laughs> yeah, paperwork, uh, guitar stuff in front of me. Uh, you know, all sorts of uh, artwork stuff. Uh, you know, there's a million, million things. Uh, let's, you know, broaden your 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 mind. It's not just what somebody is telling you have to be in life. It's what you want to be. And once you start looking around every single spot you walk to, every single place you go, keep that open-mindedness about yourself. Oh, that's yep. really cool. I see some guy around the corner. He makes sandstone. He carves sandstone. Yeah, yeah. He, and, just, you know, even, you know, my mind immediately when you said cigarette butts, and I'm thinking, you know, if you, if you got enough cigarette butts and everything else, couldn't you make it some sort of uh, mulch, some type of shredded cigarette butt, you know, and sell it for around plants that really need to stay wet for a long time uh, in the ground, m mulching it up. And yeah, I'm thinking to myself, wow, that's really crazy. You know, why do I come up with an idea like yeah, that? Why do you come up it goes with to idea? show, I mean, I, I'm not I'm saying it's curious. feasible. Yeah, you, know, I'm being it's not, you know what but, you can do with cigarette butts? And I always <laughs> tell this, uh, being a maintenance man for a lot of my life, uh, uh, I've had to empty cigarette butts in containers on there. And one thing I did learn about them was uh, they carry a lot of nicotine, and guess what nicotine does? It kills bugs. So ah. I, started, I started soaking them in a little bit of water, and then I take the nicotine and I spray it around the outside of the building, and then the company benefits because they don't have to call an exterminator. See, yeah, <laughs> see this is amazing how our minds think, you know? Yeah. <laughs> this is, I mean, taking something as mundane as a cigarette butt and putting an, another use to it, uh, this is the beauty of men. Women would never do this shit, man, no, ever. They would throw this shit out. You know, they, they, think, <laughs> they get an old board, and they don't see that they can build something out of the old board, a, a chair or something. They throw it out in the garbage. And one man's, you know, one man's uh, garbage is another man's treasure. You know, if I had 30 of those boards, I can build a fucking shed. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, damn right. Yep. I know a guy that... Uh, actually built a pole barn out of lumber that uh, uh, places like Lowe's and Home Depot uh, d couldn't sell. You know, they had it all stacked out and back. Yeah. And he says, uh, hey, look, I'll give you uh, I'll give you 50 bucks for that whole pile of lumber back there. And they said, sure, haul it off. They were happy to get rid of it. This guy built a pole barn. I mean, Jesus oh, yeah. Christ, you know. He built a pole barn, yeah. Yeah, do uh, that in your life. Uh, when you see somebody else's uh, garbage or you see some... I, my first truck uh, 
was a Ford F100 1972, I think it was. And it was sitting in some guy's old yard. And I said, man, I need that truck. And he says, well, 400 bucks. Take it for 400 bucks. It doesn't run. I took it home. I, I, I got it running. I took it to a mechanic. He helped me out. I networked with another guy. He helped me out with that. I threw some doors in the I got that truck painted. I threw some doors in the back of that truck. And then I started selling doors. Yep. It, yep. It, I mean, that's what you – just little things, you know. Those opportunities in life are, are abounding around you. <laughs> and oh, that, yeah. And there's beautiful. so many different options. You know, we're just hitting on so few of them. And if you really give it some thought, uh, these are all things that can keep you busy, that can make your life uh, – I don't know, like you've accomplished something, you know, and it doesn't have to mean anything to anybody else but yourself. The feeling of accomplishment yeah. when you've done something afterwards. Yeah. Uh, is, you're going to get, the, you're gonna get the naysayers that, oh, that's never going to work, you know. Oh, but, God, no. Screw them. How do they know? Did How you do ever they... do it? Did you try it? Did you, uh, you know, uh, quit talking to me. Go away. Shoot. Yeah, go away. Yeah, you got to cut those naysayers out of your life and become the do sayer. I'm going to do this. Absolutely. I, I worked with this uh, old guy, really old guy, maybe in his 70s once. At a, uh, it was a technical job, call center, right? Okay. And uh, we're working. He comes up to me. He goes, I got this idea for business, and you know, uh, you want to you want to do it with me. You want to partner up with me? I'm like, yeah, cool. And I kind of, you know, lost touch with him for a couple of weeks. And he calls me back up. And he goes, I'm ready, man. I'm like, okay, what you got going? He goes, well, I got this space for computer repair out of a truck stop. And even me, I snickered. I'm like, get out of here. That's yeah. not going to work. So I showed up. I gave him the benefit of the doubt. Brilliant idea. Every <laughs> truck has a laptop. Who would think of that, you know? Uh, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's just out of the box sometimes, uh, uh, being conscious about what's going on around you and not being so depressed, you know, and, and, and old naysaying and I'm not going to, I'm not going to amount to nothing and it's not going to happen. I see a lot of guys in that, that, but what I see in MGTOW is this beautiful spirit of men that can't be told anymore what they can't do. Yep. Yep. And I, you know, <coughs> I, I tend, especially after my thirties, I think I, I won't allow negative people in my life. I get rid of negative oh, people yeah. very quickly. <laughs> and um, I see a good fighting spirit with the MGTOW bunch. You know, Even though we may not agree on some things, there's still that piss and vinegar fight there. Yeah. You know? It's not just a negativity of uh, you know, whining or uh, wah, 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 and uh, you know, all this doom and gloom shit. No, they got fight left in them. Even though it might be a different opinion than I might have or whatever, it's still that fight. So it's there. It's that kick-ass attitude yeah, that's that I'm seeing out it? there. And, I, uh, yeah, I love that, man. It, it's, uh, it shows that hey, they got so much more to give. And the minute they say, you know what, I really don't feel I have much to offer, and I, bullshit, you do. Bullshit, yeah. Because I can see it. I can see it, and I can feel it. I, I can hear it in your whatever you're writing or whatever you're saying. It's there. You know, it's up to you to find, though, but it's there. You just have overlooked it yourself. And I love that spirit, you know, and we, I think we need to run with that sometimes, that uh, uh, this is positive. It really will end up positive. And, you know, the, the yeah, the computer repair in a truck stop, holy shit, brilliant. I, I did, would have never thought of that. Uh, you know, what a brilliant idea for a man to come up with. Yeah. But, and it was, I think it was part happenstance. He found the, you know, he, uh, this truck stop rented this area, you know, uh, and he looked at it and it just dawned on him, like, you know what, this will work. And he went for it. He b went broke, <laughs> you know, he yeah. put all of it in his, and I partnered up with him and I did a lot of the repairs and stuff for him. And you know what, it was, it, it turned into something special because not only was it brilliant, we had like a barbershop vibe. So yeah. these truckers oh, yeah. would come in. You know, and we would shoot the shit. We talked to them like normal people. There was no, you know, no bullshit. And I don't know. It was 
probably one of the best experiences that I've ever had, you know, just being involved with that, seeing that thinking outside the box can really work and it can turn into something special. It wasn't just a business. We had customers that came back just to hang out with us. You know, it, it was really cool. So. Yeah, and you do build up a uh, customer base because I know truckers, they, they have routes, you know, that they're constantly back and forth, back and forth. And uh, once they have a place that they, they feel at home with, people that they know, even though they're out on the road all the time, it's good to see a familiar face, you know. Absolutely, yeah. And, and look, you know, uh, even if they bullshit you and say, look, you know, my laptop, it's kind of slowing down. Can you look at it, you know, and they shoot you whatever you get for it, and, uh, and they hang out, like you said, the barbershop atmosphere, which I love the barbershop I go to, you know. I, I love sitting there. I love talking to the guys. I hang out even after I'm done. And uh, th these guys come in there and do that. That's why I said, yes, brilliant. You know, and yeah, uh, I think all these truckers have laptops. There's some type of electronics in their trucks to keep yeah. them busy. Right. That's their entertainment, you know, when they're out on the road, you know. Uh, yeah, it's part of considering other people too, considering what the what they do and not being so shallow, you know. And then you start seeing, oh, yeah, there's a whole different there's a whole different segment of humanity out there that I never considered. Uh, what do I have to offer? Uh, it, it, just keeping your eyes open, being confident. Uh, yeah, and the shaming shit these these oh, feminists are using, you know, of uh, how trashy all men are and uh, all this down talking on men, and yet you we talk about these things today, you know, of what men have done and what men do and what, everything else, and it's such a glorious thing. How dare these cunts shame us like that? How dare yeah, they? They have this. nothing to offer, nothing yeah. to fucking counter with. What are they providing to anybody? Look what yeah. all these men are doing and providing, and yet they provide nothing but hateful shaming tactics. Yeah, we seen this what? Uh, the laughing witch this week. She has a thousand accolades in her life. She's you know supposedly this uh, doctor, this thing, this uh, this president of this company or whatever, this vice president. And then you come to find out that she's working for her husband and she has no accolades. She's just doing that to prop herself up. People that give out a thousand insignias after their name usually are covering up for their own ineptness. And, uh, the, the, oh, well, look, you know, my, my wife was my vice president, and she was, uh, oh, what else was the other uh, officer? Because we were a corporation, but, uh, you know, it meant nothing. She was a secretary. She, did, she came in, she answered the phones for a little bit, did uh, the occasional book work, and she was out of there. I mean, you know, it's <laughs> a bullshit it. title. And you put this on corporate papers, you know, when you incorporate, you have officers in the company, and of course you're going to give it to your family members, people you can trust, right? So, uh, uh, yeah, her title, uh, yeah, vice president of yeah. uh, the corporation, uh, what does that really mean? It's bullshit. And, right, you know, people like me know it when Please. she says, you know, with her husband, I knew exactly what time it was. You know, I knew exactly what was going on. Uh, yeah. That didn't impress me worth a shit. And it shouldn't impress anybody else either. No, it but shouldn't. she yeah. used it. Yeah, we used to laugh all the time at at, at work when we were uh, uh, some of the uh, people around there. Oh, I need this, I need that, and I said, "What? Well, instead of a raise, why don't we just give them a title?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we can give out titles all day, and uh, if they're willing to accept that title, that's great. Uh, I, I can have a thousand accolades in my in, in my title, but what I really want is a wrench, and then I could do something with that wrench. Yeah, uh, that's more useful. That wrench is more useful to this world than a thousand accolades. <laughs> yes, it is. Yep. Uh, oh. Make town's yeah. a beautiful place, isn't it? It, 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 it? I I wish there would be some person or something out there and you know, just being open minded in the social justice to come in here and take an honest look around and see the spirit of these men, see the uh the beauty in what we're doing. The uh They don't it won't it won't fit their narrative, Joe. It doesn't it, fit it's their not, narrative, right, yeah. It's not the they're looking at a whole different end result than we are. Uh, we will never see eye to eye with any of them. Yeah, um, go, go uh, back to working for the man. Go back to the slave system, the matrix, and everything. That's what we talk about. Go back to the matrix and do that thing here in MGTOW. 
Uh, and and Joe, they're not going to talk to us. They're going to find somebody that they can uh, manipulate and then say stupid things that fits their narrative and say, see, uh, the MGTOWs are really like us anyway, you know. And uh, so they do this stupid thing that uh, they'll never talk to the real thing, you know, yeah. Yeah, the ones that are walking the walk. Real. Now, we've seen that this, we've seen a great example of this, and I, I would like to end this on this. Uh, we've seen that with, uh, you know, they said, come over to the honey badgers things and, and let's talk to the MGTOWs. Did they talk to the MGTOWs? Uh, no, no. No. They talked Not to that a, I saw. I mean, all right, Magnus, of, Magnus is the only one that I ever heard Magnus of. Is, he's only been around three months, too, you know. Right. Uh, so they, they avoided the real MGTOWs because they don't want to talk about shit like this. And they don't see no. the beauty in us, so they can prop up some some fake idea and get their narrative fed, and then uh, that's not MGTOW. You know what MGTOW is? It's the it's the thousand guys like you and me and misanthrope and uh, and from 500 to uh, you know 2,000 viewers, and there's a thousand of us out here that have real lives out here. Yeah. <laughs> and well, you know, things. I see I see here Brian Coyle. Is the Stardust talk to them? No, Stardust talk to Karen, Karen sure. Strong. Uh, those two are friends. Okay, it was moderated on the uh, uh, Honey Badger uh, podcast channel by uh, I forget his name, Brian. I think it was the moderator. But um, basically, it was no. He didn't talk to them. He talked with Karen. Uh, him and Karen had a conversation of agreeing with each other. Uh, which was fine, whatever. I, that didn't bother me. You know, it was the other one, the uh, uh, MGTOW Speaks with the yeah, Honey Badgers. Yeah. That's the you one know, they, that, that got under everybody's got, skin. Yeah. They went and got these guys that were going to fill their narrative in life about what they think MGTOW is. That's not MGTOW. No, uh, not MGTOW I mean, uh, getting married and, the you know, the one comment about how uh, MGTOW is seen as a protest until uh, women start acting right again and this and that I really I, come on you know the, the these are these are old talking points that's going yeah. back to the plantation how is that going to uh, help cut me and dry door how is that going to help me when i walk out my door in the morning with the same old uh with that same old naysayer attitude that oh god i'm just and that's what they're doing that's what they want to do to most of these guys around here is just bring that negativity to their lives where they where they go back to the plantation negativity and somehow this is going to work out. No, when I walk out my door in the morning, I have a real life to to compete, and I, I do. I want to hear a guy like this. That's, yeah. And maybe it's just blowing hot air up our asses, telling everybody that you are a better man, you are a good man, you're a decent man, you have talents. You have, uh, apply them, look inside yourself, do the self-introspection, do that. You know, maybe that's just, blow, they see it as blowing hot air, but, you know, I see more men benefiting from that than, uh, oh, don't try it, go back to the matrix. Yeah, and, and I think a lot of these guys, uh, I think a lot of them that were on that hangout were just, they put this label on themselves, self-identified label. Uh, one said that marriage is okay because, you know, I mean, <laughs> Uh, really, you know, uh, they they what they want to be uh, labeled with a cool boys club, or they perceive that it's a cool boy club. I don't know what they're thinking. I can't get it in their head. But it, yeah. you know, to me, MGTOW is not not a label or anything else. It's my way of living, what I want to do, how I perceive it. That's why a lot of my videos don't even have MGTOW in the title. But they do follow along the lines of a man going his own way, doing a lot of different things. So therefore, I walk the walk. I'm showing by example. I'm not talking about all this other shit, and I'm yeah, saying, oh, I'm a MGTOW, and then turn around and say, oh, yeah, but I'm really looking for a piece of ass that I can marry. You know, right, come yeah. on. This is... This is uh, all those really... cell sciences and pseudo-intellectualism, ah. it doesn't mean a damn thing in my life. It's, it's, not gonna, it's interesting to look at, and and it, uh, we had three guys just say, oh well, Stardust went over there, and Stardust is a big towel. Yes, he is. But, but again, he talked thing. to Karen. He yeah, talked he's... to Karen, and, and those two are very good close friends. Yeah. And you really need to listen to that hangout right. yeah. between yeah. him and her, and then give me an opinion again, because I think a lot of people will come away from that hangout thinking a whole 
a little bit different about uh, the two of them. Right, yeah. Uh, now, if you uh, open your ears, you will. Yeah. Are you going to make an internet career? And, and that's what, they, what they're saying. There are two people talking about making an internet career on selling MGTOW to people. Uh, no, I'm not Stardust. I'm not a logistics or a linguistics person. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to make that my career. I'm not. I, I, there's no way I'm going to be a lesbian, uh, a, a lesbian female in a honey badger's uniform. Uh, that's not realistic for me. Uh, what's realistic for me is the thousand other MGTOWs around here that have some good advice and some good, uh, uh, and some some accolades and some. Uh, some uh, some real courage in life, and it can tell you exactly how to do something or where they're at in life, and that's the real MGTOW, that gritty underneath where we figure things out, not this uh this this other garbage. And and I'm not picking on Stardust. It's, uh, he can do what he wants. No, but... no, I'm I'm not either. Don't get me yeah. wrong. I mean, you know, what you do in a hangout, uh, you know, eventually, if you talk long enough, you're going to show your true colors. You know, yeah. they'll, they'll come through because you can't hide that forever. And that's fine, <laughs> and, for, yeah, that's fine for them, but that's not me. Right, and, and it I isn't me they, either. Yeah, I don't think they truly represented the real MGTOW. The, well, the, even, the even if you, guys. You, know, you, can take the, you can take the label however you want it, and everybody can subvert it uh, and identify as they feel fit. However, uh, even if I say, <laughs> look, I'm... I'm not going to go under the MGTOW label. However, I am a man going my own way. I'm going to continue to do so, regardless of what the consensus is out there. You know, <laughs> of course, that includes not getting married. You know, not living. Uh, there are certain things that I put in my uh, box, if you will, of things that it means to me. Right. So, uh, look, if you want to call yourself a MGTOW and you want to get married, have at it. But don't pontificate this shit. And don't forward it onto other people. You know, oh, don't yeah. tell them. Oh, it's okay because I said I'm a MGTOW, and I said you can get married. It's okay now. Don't do that. Live your own fucking life, and call yourself whatever the hell you like. For all I care, it's not going to change how I look at things. And this is what I want to impose: is that no matter who you like in the community or dislike. That really has nothing to do with it. Take away from whoever it is the things that work for you. Right. And leave you. leave the rest. You know. Yeah. And look, I you know I'm not saying anything bad about Stardust, and I like a lot of what he's said in the past, yeah. and I've agreed with it. I took that part of it, and the other things that he said that I didn't like, I disagreed with, or I didn't say anything. But I, of course, I'm not going to use it. So I'm not taking any side here. But I am taking what will work for me and what is relevant to me. So this is what we all should be doing. You know, yeah. not disagreeing with, with this person on the basis of, well, I don't like him because his attitude sucks or you know, he he, he talks like a girl or he talks too manly or he's trying to uh, whatever. Fuck that, man. Take away what you can from these people. This is what I'm saying. I'm not trying to get uh, on anybody's good side here, and I'm not trying to piss anybody off. It's for me. It's all about me. This is what we should all be doing, putting ourselves first. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Right. It's not putting women first, not putting the world first. It's taking care of yourself first. Taking After that, then yeah. you can help other people. Then you can worry about other things. Damn, I got off on a tangent again, yeah, didn't I? There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. It, 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 uh, there's a million different places around here to learn something or be uh, someone's friend or interact or network with someone around here uh, in MGTOW. That's what we're eventually trying to build, a network of men that replaces society's uh, – it replaces the mal malformed and malfunctioning society that, that doesn't work for men. Right, it's repressive enough out there, or oppressive enough. To it's us oppressive men. enough, yeah. With, yeah. Without, uh, we need to build this community, and it starts grassroots at the bottom with, uh, with, with you, and in, in uh, networking with four guys like you, 
and then that network will grow to a bigger network and a bigger network and a bigger net and all of a sudden we have what we have now but no one seems to be able to put it together we have probably two three million people in the northeast you know two three million men that think like us that should be networking together as a, as men but there's these problems these these interaction problems that we can't seem to figure out uh, and, and get by uh, uh, women do this very well they network uh, they network and oh, then, they like manipulate they manipulate the male ego and when we ego, when yeah. we deal with other men we don't manipulate the male ego ego, ego I'm sorry uh, we fight with each other's ego we fight yeah. with our own ego we fight with each other's ego uh, the chest beating analogy That's comes in and yeah. women have learned how to manipulate that and that's what makes us such an easy damn target for the women uh, besides our our caring our empathy and our love for the fair sex if you want to call it that but uh, you know and this is a problem that I don't I don't know if men are ever gonna overcome it because we're <laughs> we have that arrogant ego within us all I think yeah, yeah. and I, I admit it freely I do too yeah, yeah, we got to get over that, and I guess that's why Barbarossa says, you know, the shedding of the ego. You know, that's why he, you know, and uh, there's some. It's very a hard good, thing, hard thing to do. But I think uh, we we can't transcend this thing, and we 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 can get over this thing, and we can all start working together. And uh, there's just this little bit of trust we have to have to do. And uh, as soon as this starts getting a little tighter, you're gonna have a. Uh, you're going to be able to, you know, use MGTOW as a resource to uh, move forward in your life. Uh, to uh, to ask somebody, what what's your community doing in this big sector here? I was thinking about moving there. I was thinking about this. What do you think? We can start using each other instead of letting the woman extract our utility. Uh, yeah. And it goes out into the and become the system. I always say we're going to become the system. And uh, I guess it's about time to wrap this thing up here. Uh, yeah, I agree with you, Joe. Uh, uh, three of us, three of us held this together pretty damn good. Yeah, I yeah. see Zeta's down there in the chat. Um, Shiny never came. Shining's in, down in there, and they didn't want to come in and talk to us. So fuck you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I love you. You know that. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. I think uh, we kind of drove the point home. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, what do you think, Miss Anthrope? Uh, he he's down in the chat too. You listening yeah. to us anymore? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm listening. I'm listening. <laughs> yeah, I guess we could wrap it up. Uh, fucking hey, man, we covered a lot of things of brilliance about seeing you know uh, value in your community and what you can give back. I love that. I'm gonna walk away with that today. That that's awesome. So. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. just got to say that he said, "Fuck you too." Okay, <laughs> uh, <laughs> love you, baby. Love you, baby. Um, yeah. Anyway, make uh, more. Make tells about a, a lifestyle that works in life. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's not about it's not about doing for the the setup present matrix that's that sucks your life out of you and leaves you at the bridge to nowhere. It's about finding yourself, having the courage to find yourself, and. Uh, Taking that out into the real world which we live in and apply it, and uh, yep. make make it, make it better for yourself. Uh, that will call, take a little introspection. That will take a little bit of courage. That will take a little bit of honesty. And uh, sooner or later, uh, MGTOW will become this system that supports men, where we can get support and. Uh, it, it will grow. It'll it'll become bigger if we think about it that way. If we think about us, if we let these naysayers drag us down and put us back into the box, and then it, it's not going to work. But I don't see that happening because there's a strength and a courage and an honesty and a beauty among these men around here that you can't put in a box, and it will grow. Yep. So with that, uh, I think I'm going to wrap this up and. and uh, I got some football. We got some chicken legs going, and uh, uh, I'll be over in a minute. <laughs> okay, just come on that flight and come on over. Anybody, everybody's invited over. <laughs> there you go. Parties <laughs> at uh, Joe's. <laughs> and uh, let's see. 
it's a it's the Browns game, so we're probably gonna lose and have disappointment. But hey, <laughs> we get to, yeah. we, we get to <laughs> make some chicken wings and be around my friends. Uh, great, with great. that, uh, I'm gonna end this broadcast. Thanks a lot, men. Thanks a lot for showing up. Thanks a lot, Misanthrope and Warhorse, for being in the conversation today and Thank uh, you. adding what you what you know about life to be true. And uh, uh, with that, you guys have a good day.